Hello again, it's Anita Bell, the Motown Bell, coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan. As promised, I wanted to blow the whistle on mortgage fraud. So let me begin by first apologizing. I do want to apologize. I promised back in January that I'd make this video. Unfortunately, it was in January of 2008 that I got into a car accident. Uh, just briefly, a gentleman decided that a yield sign was just a suggestion and he was going to beat me in that intersection and he miscalculated. So I wasn't trying to race with him in the rain, but still, I lost. I guess you could say I lost because I'm the one that got hit, I'm the one that got injured, and he also didn't want to stay and give me any information. It was a hit and run. So uh, I'm still recovering, I'm still in pain. So please forgive this video if the if the language is a little harsh, if the or even if the grammar isn't perfect, if I wasn't able to edit it, just just forgive me for being in pain. All right. With that being said, let me begin with also some questions that I get. I am asked, Anita, are you encouraging people to be fiscally irresponsible? Are you telling them to blow off their bills? Uh, screw the mortgage company, take that money that they were going to pay on their mortgage, go buy themselves a BMW or Mercedes and, and basically just use a land patent as an excuse to to not keep their promises and, and all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm accused of, of encouraging that. No, not at all. Not at all. I like to pursue land patents particularly in cases where there is mortgage fraud and use it as a way of Basically, when the mortgage company was screwing you, use it as a way to protect yourself. I, I, I'm very strongly against this mortgage fraud that's going on, and it's so rampant. I feel that land patents are the same as a woman using self-defense when an attacker is trying to rape her. So, so for those people who have an argument of saying, well, you know, land patents are... Right, well, just think of it the way I just pictured for you. Just use that type of visualization and let me talk a little bit about mortgage fraud. There's so many instances of mortgage fraud. I want to make this video brief because I really need to go to bed. But um, let me give you a couple of examples of cases that I'm working on right now and give you the names of the usual suspects. Let's just not take any pr prisoners. Let's not beat around the bush. Let me name some names of some companies that we really need to keep an eye on. If the FBI or attorney generals aren't going to prosecute them, we need to go after them. And so let me give you an example. Right here in Michigan, um, still trying to help this little old man you know if get a colleague to help him if i can't do it myself help this little old man right now he's 97 years old but while he was 95 even though his house was fully paid for and he had been living in this household more than 50 years while he was 95 somehow his signature got on a mortgage and a note somehow this new century mortgage company completed a loan application on this man when he was 95 years old. And the reason I say somehow is that not all 95 year old people have this problem, but this man had severe dementia due to Alzheimer's. That is unconscionable what they are trying to do. They are trying to foreclose on this man. They're trying to take away the house that he paid for with his blood, sweat, and tears and virtually sentence him to a nursing home. Now granted, when he, when his family can't care for him at home any longer, maybe that might be where he has to go, but that shouldn't be the decision of the mortgage company. They shouldn't just buy his house from him under the guise of a mortgage. That is just outrageous to me. But even more outrageous is that this family, before coming to me, they went to lawyers and said, help us. And the best help that they were able to get was to declare bankruptcy and seek a Chapter 13 to modify the mortgage terms. 
why didn't those lawyers raise the issue that the mortgage was a fraud? That the man just did not have this, the capacity, the legal capacity. He didn't know what he was doing when he signed that mortgage. Why didn't the lawyers raise it? I don't know. Maybe that's malpractice. But if you have malpractice and mortgage fraud going on and attorneys trying to protect mortgage companies for whatever reason, I don't know if they were paid off or they're all in the Masons, whatever. I don't know what is going on. But these are people that come to me as a last resort and say, can I land patent help? And I'm like, let's try. Let's try. So the next example of mortgage fraud, this went on in Illinois. And this was a disabled woman. Definitely, her rights violated the rights protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. But let me just mention to you this. This was a mortgage now done by First Franklin, another one of the usual suspects with mortgage fraud. And what they did, basically with the culprit being the mortgage broker, was that he inflated her income. Now, many times this can happen and you would not catch it, but this was an egregious, egregious type of behavior that the mortgage broker did. What he did was say that this disabled woman was his employee at his investment company. So he had a mortgage company and an investment company. And as an employee, he said she worked full-time making $60,000 a year. So he was able, as the owner of the investment company, to create uh, and falsify, I should say, tax returns and pay stubs. So she looked like she qualified when in actuality this lady is in a wheelchair. She doesn't work full time. And so here she is stuck in a First Franklin 30 year adjustable rate mortgage at an obscene interest rate. And to add insult to injury there, she's only paying the interest on this mortgage. So for 30 years she pays the interest and then at the end of 30 years she doesn't own her home in full. No, she still owes them the principal of over $200,000 in one balloon payment. Thanks First Franklin, that was a great deal. So of course she thought well all I have to do is just refinance and then she finds out she can't refinance because she doesn't qualify. How could she qualify on this simple social security income that she has? So, these are the ways that predatory lenders and mortgage fraud are victimizing our people. If you're a victim of First Franklin, New Century Mortgage, oh, other usual culprits, let me see, we, we, oh, Gosh, I'm sorry if I can't just tell you all their names. I know Household Finance and um, AmeriQuest. There are more, but if you have a mortgage from any of these companies, call me, email me, get in touch with me. Let's audit these documents. If I don't feel well enough to do it myself, I have colleagues that can help me. But let's not just walk out on that mortgage. Don't just give up. Even if you're in a state that does not have land patents, Mortgage fraud can be, well, prosecuted using some state laws and the TILA, Truth in Lending, and RESPA, Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. These are, TILA and RESPA are federal laws. So there are laws in place to help you even if you are in a state that does not have land patents. But if you're in a land patent state, in addition to canceling the mortgage under TILA or RESPA, let's try and let you keep that house with your land patents. So, if the bank is saying, you're screwing us, you're telling them, no, I'm, I'm using this land patent to keep you from screwing me. So, protect yourself, protect your family, don't be homeless, give me a call. Thank you and God bless you.